My name is Kirsten Gillardi. I am director of the SEDOC Society and the California Lost Fish and Gear Recovery Project. I work at UC Davis, and I'm a veterinarian. The problem is really twofold. One is it's a problem for the ocean, um, no surprise. Lost and abandoned fishing gear can continue to entangle and trap marine life. Sometimes um, the animals it was intended to catch, but also other animals that it's not intended to catch. And so um, it's, it alters the seafloor, it presents a navigational hazard for boats, um, and it's a, a hazard for people, the people who use the water divers and, and surfers, for example. Um, it's also a problem for the fishermen, and it's a problem because it's money out of pocket, uh, it's lost opportunity for fishing, it's cost to them for replacing their gear. So it's a problem for the fishermen, it's a problem for the ocean too. We are trained to fix things and, and heal things, and as a wildlife veterinarian, um, most often the problems impacting free-ranging wildlife have something to do with the environment the wildlife are living in or the people that they're sharing the environment with. So um, I, I was aware of the problem of lost fishing gear in other parts of the world and um, realized that as a veterinarian, I could do something about it and fix it, much like a surgeon sees something and um, if, it, if it doesn't belong there, you need to get it out. That was kind of the attitude I took as a veterinarian and wanting to heal the ocean by removing lost fishing gear. And, and in doing that, really um, preventing a hazard for wildlife, um, but also working with the people who are ocean users and, and getting them involved in the, in the solution. So um, it's tremendously satisfying. I love, I love the ocean. I love being on it. I love being in it. And so that was another, from some sort of a personal reason, um, that, was, that was a big motivator for me too. I would say that there was our, our ideas and, and what we wanted to do was met with a little bit of skepticism in the commercial fishing community, mostly because I think they felt that it was calling attention to something that, um, negative attention to something that was really not an, in, an intentional thing on their part. So a little bit of consternation early on, but very quickly, that really changed once um, the, the commercial fishing world could see that we were working very closely with fishermen to solve the problem and, and employing them and working with them in and on the water to recover the gear. So that part of it, um, that, that uh, sort of acceptance was pretty quick to get once we started getting the work done in the water. Um, funding has um, thankfully not been uh, too challenging compared to other things that I raise money for. Um, a lot of people, a lot of agencies, a lot of foundations can understand the value of cleaning up the ocean and so we've been really fortunate to get a um, good amount of support from federal agencies, state agencies, and even private funders. We started the program in 2005 and since then we've recovered over a hundred tons of gear and gear related debris and that's been nets, hundred uh, nets, several hundred lobster traps and almost 2,000 Dungeness crab pots and that's um, all up and down the coast of California. Lost and abandoned fishing gear is not just a California problem, it's a global problem. And in Hawaii and in Washington State, there have been major programs to clean up lost and abandoned fishing gear from the ocean, just like we're doing here in California. Um, and I'm even working with somebody now in Myanmar, a single individual who's taken upon herself to address the tremendous problem of lost and abandoned fishing gear off their coast. And I'm excited about that. And if we can get more and more of those pro projects going in the world, I think we'll make a major dent in the problem.